Announced in New South Wales, where I hate to say it because Dominic Perrottet, the Premier, is a thoroughly decent man, the Liberal government seems to be unravelling before our eyes. It's not just the resignation today of Trade Minister and Deputy Liberal Leader Stuart Ayres for failing to act at arm's length in the Barilaro saga, or Monday's sacking of small business minister Eleni Petnos for allegedly bullying staff. It's that the Premier doesn't seem to be in charge of his government. The real power seems to be the ultra-woke treasurer, Matt Keane, who yesterday blamed fat figures for a social media post implying that Ayres and Petnos had been treated un un unequally. So today, Ayres duly fell on his sword. It's completely implausible that an arm's length process run by the public service would have concluded that the just retired Barilaro was the best person to be the state's trade rep in America. But it wasn't arm's length. Here's the CEO of Investment New South Wales, Amy Brown, giving evidence on this point to the inquiry today. I would say that objectively speaking, arm's length is not a fair characterisation of how the process was run. And even if it was, even if it was arm's length, Barilaro should have run the gauntlet of an open and transparent process to prove he was the best candidate for the job. As it's now turned out, though, while the public servants might have technically been in charge, Stuart Ayres had many discussions, formally and informally, and lots of meetings with the relevant public servant, who admitted that Ayres had acted as an informal referee for Barilaro. The, the issues in the review go directly to the engagement of Minister Ayres with the Department Secretary in respect of the recruitment process. So that raises questions in relation um, to the Ministerial Code of Conduct. Um, as a result, um, Minister Ayres has resigned from his positions and, and DPC, the Department of Premier and Cabinet, um, will conduct an investigation. But what does this mess say about the judgment of anyone at the top of the New South Wales Government, including the Premier, that they ever thought of appointing the Deputy Premier and thinking it would pass the pub test? This was always going to be a scandal, even in the unlikely event that proper process had applied. After all, this is the bloke that created the job he left the Parliament and then got. As it's happened, it's already devoured the government for six plus weeks and looks like continuing as the opposition keeps probing what the Premier knew versus what the Premier said. Questions are raised in relation to whether or not there have been a breach of the Ministerial Code of Conduct. Then there's the fact that the government has reneged on its solemn commitments, not just the public ones like building the Northern Beaches Tunnel to ease road congestion, but no less important private ones, like a handshake deal with rugby league boss Peter Volandes to build more suburban footy stadiums. None of this is going to help a government that's just seven months out from an election seeking a fourth term and with no obvious agenda other than spending money and fixated about trying to avoid a state version of the Teal's assault on Sydney's leafy suburbs while leaving middle Australian towns and families out in the cold. This might be a government run by a Conservative, but he's not in power. He's merely taking dictation from a lefty like Matt Keane. And if Scott Morrison's loss should tell the Liberals anything, you don't hold office by being Labor light.